as good as this. Thank you, everyone. I normally do not make New Year's resolutions, um, but this year I did. And the reason I did was a confluence of events that I want to talk about tonight. Um, the first of which was I went onto the Westchester Story Slam website and I said, what's January's topic? And lo and behold, it was resolutions. Now that alone didn't make me want to make a resolution. It made me want to tell funny stories about all the resolutions I failed over the years. So that did nothing for me other than get the juices flowing a little bit. I went to bed that night and I picked up a collection of short stories I was reading. This is a second event going on now. And I turned the page to the next short story in the collection and it had the best title I've ever heard for a short story. The title alone, it, it was just pure potential and every time I say it out loud it does the same thing to me again. It's a Raymond Carver story and the title is What We Talk About When We Talk About Love. I thought, wow, that's really cool, right? But it did nothing for me. I went to bed that night. Next day at work, something, I don't know, unusual happened. It wasn't funny, it was just unusual. One of my peers came up to me, and he had a newer client, someone he hadn't really dealt with much, and he said, you're not gonna believe what just happened. And I said, what? He said, I called her up, and I said, how are you doing? And she said, you don't really mean that. You're just saying that. Right? You don't care how I'm doing, you just want something or want to tell me something, which is it? Right? And he walked away, he told me this, this doesn't happen every day. But I heard him repeating the story all day long to anyone who came with an earshot. And the response that was given to that story was quite frankly the same one I had and one a lot of you may have is, well she was right, but she shouldn't have said it out loud, right? And I was thinking, you know, what do we talk about when we talk about love? And I was thinking, we live in a world where people can freely ask each other, how are you doing, and they don't mean it, and that's okay with everyone. That's an acceptable way to go about life, right? How are you doing? I don't care, right? So I had that in my head. I still was resolved to do nothing at that point. And two days later, the final tipping point happened here. My son, who's 17 years old, came to the room. He said, Dad, I have bad news for you. I said, what's that? He said, one of your heroes, Václav Havel, died. And that really was sad news to me, and I was glad my son knew he was my hero. But he's 17 years old, and he doesn't linger. He gave his news, and he pulled the door shut, and he walked away, right? And I'm left with this, and I was thinking, well, what if he asked me, why is that guy one of my heroes, right? And I was thinking about that. That was the final tipping point. Now, if you don't know who Václav Havel is, he really is one of my heroes. He was a writer. He was a dissident. He was a political prisoner. He was a romantic. That was a key thing. He always talked about people and he always talked about love. And he went to jail because he couldn't let go of those ideas at a time the communist wanted him to, right? This guy really is a hero of mine. And when I found out he died, it really made me think about things and it really kicked something else back into my mind. What do we talk about when we talk about love, right? Václav Havel, after the communist wall fell, was elected the first leader of Czechoslovakia and then the Czech Republic after the Czechs and the Slovaks broke up. And he would get up and make speeches. And when he was making his political speeches, you know what he'd talk about? Love. He would get up and talk about love. And to the established politicians, he was a joke, right? They didn't care about what he was saying. He was no threat to them because he just kept talking about love. So he got to do what he did as long as he wanted to do it. And then he walked away from that part of his life. But he was just a great man who, who said the right thing and said the right thing because he was a romantic. And that's what I was thinking about, all these things going together. So when all these things came together, I finally made a resolution for this year. And it's this. This year, I'm going to talk more about love. I realized that love is a grassroots campaign, right? Václav Havel, they weren't threatened by him because he'd been talking about love for a quarter of a century. He just talked about it, right? And they thought it was kind of funny, but it didn't bother them. Guys like Martin Luther King Jr., guys like Mahatma Gandhi, guys like Jesus Christ were killed because they were a threat because they talked about love. So it made me realize that love is a grassroots campaign. So I'm going to talk about it more this year. I'll tell you up front, I'm, I'm not an expert, right? I'm just romantic. I may get it wrong, but I'm going to try it, right? And you don't have to listen to me. No one has to. I'm going to talk more about it to my wife, to my kids, to my family, to my friends, to strangers at the... Brew house, it's awesome here. I love this place, right? Um, you can tune me out like the people who say, ah, you don't mean it. Or you can listen. And the last thing I'm going to ask tonight before I stop is this. When you're 
getting ready for bed tonight, when you look in the mirror, when you're brushing your teeth, look in the mirror and ask yourself, what do you talk about when you talk about love? Thank you. Thank you.